Hello friends, we are live with you today. Today, we are presenting an investment project for a new generation of airships. On air, I am Pavel Filipov, and with me is Fedor Konstantinov. Before we begin, I just remind you that much depends heavily on your active participation. So if you want to support the project and if you like what we will be telling you today, please don't forget to like and share this broadcast because the more viewers we have, the faster our investment project will develop and progress and the sooner the first airship will be in the sky. Don't forget to share the links with your friends right now. You can send the link on vcontacte and our main broadcasts are happening on YouTube where you can watch conveniently. The recording will also be available under the same link. So even later, if someone watches, it will still be relevant. Well, let's get started. First of all, I would like to introduce myself and explain where you are. You are at the webinar of the New Generation Airships Project. This is an investment project in which we plan to build innovative airships. We will do this here in Russia. We attract funds from private investors through collective investments. Those people who want new and innovative technologies to come into existence in Russia and around the world to change and positively impact this world and who also want to earn money because those who support this project today will receive a share of the business being created. We are a financial company, a financial company solar group, and our work is to provide funding for such innovative, promising and rewarding projects, funding for great and beneficial projects and ideas that can yield a good and beneficial financial return for those people who support these projects. And, as you understand, we are doing this through crowdfunding. This is when an unlimited number of people can join our projects, invest as much money as they are willing to, and receive a share of the business. We have been doing this for more than seven years now. And during this time, we have quite impressive results. We have over 500,000 people registered on our investment platform and almost $100 million have already been nearly attracted to our investment projects. Our first project, the company Sovelmash, is indeed now already in its final stage. This is a company that specializes in the design and development of a new generation of electric motors, is indeed a resident of the Special Economic Zone Technopolis Moscow, and is currently undergoing a very crucial and extremely important stage a state inspection during which Sovelmash is expected to receive documents confirming the completion of construction and then proceed to put it into commercial operation, so to speak. As a company, Solar Group is indeed a financial company. Therefore, at the conclusion of our first project, we announced the full launch of our second project and today we will tell you more about it. We decided to focus specifically on airships, as this is one of the most interesting and trending areas in the world today. Despite this, even though we have long understood how truly remarkable and indeed promising this is, I would certainly still like to ask Fedor a question. Fedor, why airships specifically? So I greet everyone. So, well friends, it seems we are back on air, and as I was told, despite this pause, the fact that our broadcast was briefly interrupted, I was heard, and everything I said, you heard and saw. Well, at least in the recording, I think this gap won't exist, so we won't repeat ourselves. I will just repeat my question to Fedor, why airships specifically? Why did we choose to focus on this direction? Yes, greetings to everyone. That's a good question, and indeed, as a matter of fact, there are numerous answers to it. The first is that, historically speaking, public funding has helped build airships more than once in various different countries 150 years ago, 100 years ago, during the Soviet era, and even in modern times, including us, of course. It just so happened that through the method of crowdfunding, well, crowdfunding is a new term, in general, collective investments, and the same Hindenburg lifted its apparatus, the Komsomolskaya Pravda, the Soviet apparatus was lifted. Even earlier, the French were building airships. So it seems that the fate of airships is to be constructed through collective investments, and there is indeed a demand for it from people on all sides. You can check it, look at the analytics for the queries there. In Yandex and Google, many people ask every month, 
where the airships have gone, what airships are, and why airships are not flying. Therefore, people always uh, consistently support it with their money. Yes, but seriously, analysts from around the world in all countries have come to the conclusion that states need economies, and not just the economy of a specific country, but rather global economies as a whole to maintain the growth rates required in the current economic model. It is necessary to add some logistical solutions to those that already exist. To expand markets, this is generally what happens. It all comes down to airships. They are slightly faster, slightly cheaper, and we need a lot of them, especially large ones for cargo transportation. Analysts primarily discuss cargo transportation, particularly container shipping. They say that if we create a celestial silk road, the economy will benefit significantly over the next 100 years. All countries are already doing it. In China, they're producing airships, and in the United States, they're resuming. By the way, indeed, the airship industry has lasted the longest for them, not counting the Germans. The Germans are building, but they are constructing one over many years. They sell it for a very high price. As we know, they are not planning to build large mass-produced units for now. But the small devices are being built for tourism. Africans are building them, and we have started to build as well. So analysts agree that this is absolutely necessary. Reality shows us that everyone has already started. It is definitely needed. But why, once again, airships? Solar Group initially had the task of undoubtedly finding a project that would be as profitable as possible. If we launch it from point A, there will be a very significant gain at point B. And this very significant gain is precisely a kind of industry forming structure. There is an approach, for example, to release a small product that will later be part of another product. You can produce something or you can establish an industry. This is where you have development, production, repair, operation and related training all in one. Staff training, maintenance of those very airships, provision of services. You can easily open a logistics company and sell airships with these hangars. That is, this is a whole industry that starts with a very small action, and with minimal costs, you can achieve such a significant output. The task was certainly and specifically to search for a project, and nothing better than the airship was found. And why airships again? Because there is a team. That is the most important thing. There is a team of implementers. There are engineers. There is a designer. There are people who have already done this and it is a full-fledged team. All that was left was to reorganize once again and finance the whole thing, so everything came together. Can you explain in a few words what an airship is, what its features are, and how it differs from a balloon, for example? And then, where can they actually be used? An airship is a very complex flying apparatus that utilizes additional physical laws. This includes Archimedes' principle as the lifting force. If an airplane or helicopter needs to constantly expend energy to stay in the air, the helicopter must rotate its main rotor to hover in place, which consumes fuel. An airplane needs to constantly generate propulsive force, meaning it can only stay in the air at a certain speed, at which point its wings begin to create the necessary lift. In contrast, a dirigible can remain airborne, because it contains a certain volume of buoyant helium and it does not expend energy on that. It hangs in the air, thus distinguishing itself from helicopters and airplanes and does not expend energy. Yes, to create the propulsive force, it has the same engines and it also consumes fuel. But unlike an airplane and a helicopter, it consumes much less fuel, which is more economically efficient. Well, in general, in the future, and it seems that the future has already arrived, it has a very large surface that can be completely covered with solar panels, and the engines can be electric. And so it has this advantage. It can be completely environmentally friendly and clean. Airplanes and helicopters cannot achieve that yet. And where can they be applied? We know the standard areas, like advertising, for example, right? Advertising. Or tourism, yes, this is the most common direction that is associated with airships. Plus the transportation of oversized cargo. They say that airships are very useful. 
You can attach something large to them, for example, blades from wind turbines. Very often they virtually attach or take the power line tower and transmission line all at once. Yes, indeed, it is possible to carry out such cargo transportation, for example, to pick up a sizable cargo from a manufacturer that cannot be transported by rail or road due to its dimensions. It can be transported by sea, of course, but it still needs to be delivered to the sea. In general, this cargo can be picked up and delivered directly to the location where the product will be used, such as, this is one of the most common advantages of using airships. Typically, in general, they can be used in various situations, anywhere, starting from very small technological devices. In the form of drones, in the form of unmanned vehicles. This is the delivery of some small but very important cargo, for example, medications. This is the path they took in Africa. There, Africans together with the French created a startup, assembled a small device, I don't remember exactly, but it turned out to be about 8 meters long, and it transports medications between cities in an automatic unmanned mode. This is the smallest one, it's a drone. But, again, a drone like this, if a regular drone is a quadcopter, yes, we have come to accept that today drones are quadcopters, although drones can also fly with wings like an airplane. A quadcopter is so far, well, in general, an airship is more advantageous. Firstly, it won't fall even if its engines shut down. It is still aerostatically unloaded. It takes part of its weight from the lifting gas. Yes, there is frontal resistance because it is large and has a lot of sail area, among other factors. But all of its disadvantages. The larger the airship, the smaller the disadvantage. There, the laws of physics undoubtedly work. Starting from something small, ending with a gigantic airship. The hotel airship, the airship. In short, the airship can indeed create infrastructure around itself. It can be a large flying complex that, when landing in a remote area, can establish a medical center or any other facility around it. Even if there is an energy center, one can bring generators, fuel, and other equipment. It could bring a lot of equipment with it, and this would become some kind of industrial center, whether it's a sawmill or for the oil and gas industry. That is, as we know, the application of mass, everything we can imagine, is generally feasible. And yes, it can definitely be used from small to huge, and even in the stratosphere. Few people talk about this. Most discuss stratospheric tourism. However, the real money is actually buried in stratospheric airships and stratospheric airship platforms, which can perform remote sensing of the Earth. Relay communications provide internet access and handle many other tasks and functions. There are those who are indeed currently working on satellites, but satellites are time-consuming, expensive and impossible to repair. However, a stratospheric airship can... Firstly, satellites either hover at a point or fly along a specific orbit. An airship can maneuver. That's already a good thing. An airship can descend, service equipment, and ascend back. Satellites cannot do that at all. Well, the cost of the airship in serial production and commercial operation will be much lower than that of these space vehicles, space rockets, satellites, and booster stages. It is clear that developing it requires a significant investment, and it is quite expensive, but its future use is the very golden opportunity. The stratosphere is unoccupied. The stratosphere is unoccupied. We have learned to fly in the air maneuver in space, but the stratosphere is empty and everyone is striving to get there so the airship could even be there. So you compared stratospheric airships to satellites, right? In terms of functionality. When comparing airships to other types of aircraft like airplanes and helicopters, what advantages do airships have? Airplanes and helicopters can also perform these tasks. Well, the same thing is that neither an airplane nor a helicopter can hover over the city for several days. An airship can, starting from even relatively small sizes, approximately around 2,000 to 4,000 cubic meters, which is a small airship, already comfortably hang in the air for extended periods of time for days. The larger the airship, the greater its energy capacity, allowing it to remain airborne for longer durations either in flight or hovering over a location. This is something that 
neither an airplane nor a helicopter can do. It is clear that an airship is better than an airplane as it can land and take off vertically, but a helicopter can do that as well. It can, but the airship can have a carrying capacity of 200, 300, 400, or 500 tons, but a helicopter cannot have such a payload capacity. At some point, airplanes also cannot have a greater payload capacity. The laws of physics do not allow them to be that way. However, no one seems to have stated any theoretical limitations for airships. I don't want to say what hasn't been discovered, but if there is a cargo transport ship with insane carrying capacity, it is definitely airships, certainly not helicopters or airplanes. Yes, it is a bit slower. To be more precise, it is much slower than airplanes in the form we know them. But there are already promising innovative designs for high-speed, high-altitude airships from our team of developers which are efficient. There are speeds of 300, 400 and 500 kilometers per hour and even higher. This is already quite different from what it was before. Airships used to fly at around 100 kilometers per hour. However, they still haven't reached the speeds of airplanes like Boeing's. Regarding other companies that are currently involved in airships, I have also immersed myself in this environment, so to speak, and I see that everyone seems to be talking about airships everywhere, and they plan to use them for a variety of tasks. From what various companies and governments are doing around the world right now, what would you highlight? Are there any interesting projects or ideas that are currently being implemented? Interesting ideas, but no one is talking about it. You see, the Chinese are currently making a clone of our Russian AU-30. We had one like that. They built it. They built it. There is nothing modern about it. It is simply an air vehicle that is lighter than air. It is controlled, which is why it is called an airship. They will create the same business model that is currently being implemented in Germany. In Germany, they produce a 12-seat airship. It flies over Friedrichshafen. You have ridden it and have already seen it. It earns a decent amount of money. Oh, there are a couple of devices flying there and they have enough overhead. The Chinese are making the same model, the same airship. This is right between our AU-30 and the German New Zeppelin. Nothing modern. They took the same type of aircraft. They just ordered them. One is already flying and they ordered another 10. They want to launch a total of 11 along the tourist route. It seems like a refined version of what we have. As for what will come next, I'm sure there are some promising designs, but no one is talking about them. Because even the external appearance of the airship, how it looks, what shape it has, what shape the fins are, what the gondola looks like, and where the motors, well, the engines are located. They can be located both on the gondola and on the body of the airship itself, for example, there is someone at the back of the German one, and additionally, someone is positioned at the front. It's a secret. This is the very thing, so to speak, the main point, which is to calculate this very external appearance, to position the engine, the weight distribution, and so on and so forth. They are all being hidden. I'm sure that someone is making a modern airship, but they just aren't showing it. Sergei Brin is not modern. Sergey Brin is doing the same thing in America. Sergey Brin, co-founder of Google, is making his personal airship. There he said that the server would lift the air, but now he says that these will be rescue operations. He is making a rigid airship according to the classic German scheme. There are no modern rigid airships. He has one. But it feels like it entirely and completely copies that old inefficient device. However, there is absolutely nothing at all from it in any way. Yes, it is the largest of the currently existing devices. Yes, it certainly uses carbon composite materials there, but indeed it's quite challenging to call it modern. Especially something from the future in particular, what they are doing is exactly and specifically aimed at the stratosphere. Not long ago, recently, an American company launched a small, entirely new device into the stratosphere. In the stratosphere, it is possible to launch both unmanned probes, balloons, and airships. 
Although they can be made controllable, it depends on the altitude. They select the necessary air currents, circulate, fly, and so on. The guys have already launched an airship. It has a cigar-shaped form, is equipped with electric motors, and has small solar panels. It's small, but it's already something modern. The French do not show any production or construction at all. They only show renders, but they claim that by 2025-2026 we will lift an airship completely covered with solar panels into the sky, powered by electric motors, capable of carrying 20 people, including tourists. Something modern, yes, but whether they are actually making it is still unclear. Are they hiding it so that no one copies it? Maybe. But more often than not, it has turned out that whoever talks about airships, I am the one making them. Most often they don't do it. Those who do show it openly. For example, Bryn shows it, and it's being shown in China. The Africans did it and immediately boasted about it, showing it off. I know of about five startups that are similar to what the Africans are doing. Someone is carefully planning to monitor the power line, building small devices, while others are delivering medications like this. We also have such small ones in our country, but of course they can only be called small toys. The words don't come easily, but it's not an airship. For now you could say it's drones with an aerostatic unloading system. However, we haven't seen anything serious and modern yet. Well, one way or another, it is clear that interest in this has significantly increased again in the world. Even on the internet, many articles start with the fact that in the early 21st century, interest in airship themes somehow revived. They were certainly actively used and built in the 20th century, but since the beginning of the 21st century, it seems that something has changed. It could be technologies, or perhaps some trends in the world towards ecology, such as recycling and so on. But the fact remains that we are starting our project at exactly the right time, because we have not yet fallen behind our potential competitors, a word you may not like, but nonetheless, with whom we will have to collaborate or compete in this field. Moreover, we have a chance not only to catch up with them, but also to surpass them in many ways. In fact, we have no one to catch up with. We believe we are ahead of the curve because those very AU-30s are just like the currently operating German devices. They are exactly the same as those that the Chinese are currently building, only they were constructed in our country between 2005 and 2008. That is, we are essentially practically 20 years ahead. The only problem is that we haven't done anything in these 20 years from a practical point of view. From a theoretical point of view, in fact, everyone was doing everything because, as I understood, once you are involved in the airship theme, the idea of airships doesn't leave your mind, and all the developers were creating their perspective designs. As if to say, while working at their jobs to earn a living, there was still that underground circle of airship enthusiasts where they discussed ideas, made calculations, and thought about what the airship would be like. They didn't stand still, and so I will repeat, there is no one to catch up with. Everyone will be trying to catch up with us, and we will demonstrate this very quickly. Please tell us what we plan to do, what is expected to be implemented within our project, what assets might be created, and in general what devices are planned to be launched into the sky and when. Now I will explain, within the framework of this crowdfunding project, under the people's financing, and in line with the task that Solar Group sets for the project, a parent company will be created to provide a comprehensive understanding of the objectives and goals and ensure that all stakeholders are well informed and aligned with the vision. Aren't you going to draw? Yes, I can definitely draw. Today we decided to try drawing the presentation by hand. Please let us know if this is more convenient and clearer for you. If it is clearer, we will always do it this way. So, returning to what was said earlier, Solar Group said the task of creating a company that would grow from a small seed into a fruitful tree that bears enormous fruits. It is essentially an entire industry, 
and for everything to come to fruition, it will naturally be created through the financing of crowdfunding, with the mechanism ensuring that profits are distributed back to the crowd investors. Therefore, within the framework of the project, a parent company will be established. This is the key main beneficiary in this entire subsequent process, a crucial component. It will serve as a holding company and will in fact already have numerous directions. This is a type of development. The design bureau will handle the development. After that, it will go into serial production. Of course, there will be a training center for preparing pilots, technicians, and other essential roles such as engineers. Additionally, there will be a construction company that will be responsible for the construction and maintenance and operation of the hangars. Subsequently, an operating company will follow, which will gain extremely valuable and effective practical hands-on experience in operating those very devices with the help of this and how to name it, the commercial department, conditionally, which will be engaged in the sales of those very airships and hangars, and naturally together with sales specialists. The term sales specialists sounds a bit off. Perhaps sales competencies is better. All of this should flow together meaning it should be under one management. In general, a parent company is being created with this entire structure, which we will outline a bit more precisely later. For the design bureau to function, we have already rented this office. We are conducting today's webinar from this office. So, the design bureau is first of all an office, it is a legal structure of sorts. It is people, of course, first and foremost, a team. This path has already been traversed. Everything has been done here. We are in the office. People are getting hired. The office is being furnished, and so on. They promised that the scientific and technical discussions would take place today, but they were actually planning to hold them on Monday. Today is Tuesday, so tomorrow there will be a scientific and technical council regarding the technical appearance of the first device. In other words, this structure is operational. There have been many suggestions about what the first device will specifically be, and we have even discussed some of these ideas before. However, it was decided to convene a large scientific and technical council, bringing together specialists from the industry, not only those who are currently employed and working in this design bureau, but also related industry specialists, so to speak, to provide an outside perspective. In general, this design bureau will generally be involved in the crowd investment project, in the development of two devices, of two types of devices. And so, regarding the first device, this scientific and technical council will take place tomorrow. I already have a rough idea of what this device will be. It won't be a toy like many make, an 8 meter one. They asked to use a darker marker if possible, as it may not be very visible on the divided area. I think this will be better. So let me outline it. Parent company. Design Bureau, and as of this moment, we are currently heading in this particular direction with our Design Bureau as we speak. Thus. We are currently in the process of forming the technical requirements and the technical appearance of that very first device. In six months, a second device will appear here. Again, the development of this device will be launched. I am currently drawing them in a classic shape, but in reality, it is unknown. It may already be some kind of hybrid. The first will definitely be of a classic shape, which is cigar-shaped with specific details regarding its elongation and expansion. This will most likely be kept a secret by the designer until the very end, but we will soon learn about its upcoming technical specification. The vehicle is designed to carry a payload with a maximum capacity of approximately 500 kilograms. Additionally, 
It is engineered to travel a distance reaching up to 1,000 kilometers. This combination of payload capacity and range makes it highly versatile for various applications. It is planned, and the discussion is ongoing, that this will definitely be a fully unmanned device. In one version, in the second version, it will be optionally piloted, and in the third version, it will be fully piloted, such as the drone is exclusively cargo, meaning it can carry a minimum of 500 kilograms for 500 kilometers completely in automatic mode. Optionally piloted, in case there is a very valuable cargo, a pilot can be present to control everything. The piloted version is when typically one or two pilots can carry up to five people in it. This is all one type and size. To give you an idea, it will be about 40 meters long, maybe a little more. In terms of height, we need to fit it within a strict requirement of 12 meters for the highest point. The height from the lowest to the highest point is important, so that we do not have to build hangars specifically for this device. It should fit into any aviation hangar. This is a requirement. It must fit into any aviation hangar and it has to be completely unmanned. No one has made such devices yet. Well, there will be more details when we conduct the scientific and technical council, but in general, this device will already incorporate many features that were not present before. In general, for all airships, the most important question or rather a very sensitive one, is the near ground operation. Many have seen those very videos where an airship is pulled out of the hangar with many people tugging on the ropes. Those are the old videos. And then they let go and it smoothly ascends. In a modern airship, naturally, this should not be the case. It should be able to exit the hangar completely autonomously without any people. This is because in general, the salaries of technicians, engineers, and all personnel, including the pilot, in the transportation of any cargo using airships, can account for almost half of all expenses. By removing people from this process, meaning making it unmanned from the moment it leaves the hangar, we significantly reduce the cost of transporting one ton over one kilometer, making it competitive with other logistic solutions. Therefore, yes, it is unmanned. This is its new near-Earth operation, again without human involvement, all in automatic modes. This is not about robots holding it with ropes. There is, in general, beautiful mechanization that can already be implemented, and all of this will be demonstrated and tested on it. Subsequently, these solutions will simply be multiplied for larger devices. We will probably learn what this large device will be closer to the new year. A scientific and technical council will also take place, and technical requirements will be formulated for it, along with its technical specifications and external appearance. As part of this project, it is indeed planned to develop these two types of devices. For this type of device, the construction company will have its own technical requirements. A hangar will be built, and the hangar will have its own technical requirements as well. The construction company, upon receiving the technical requirements, will find contractors to build the hangar for this type of airship. The hangar will need to be constructed on a specific piece of land. The acquisition of this land and the construction of the hangar are all planned within the framework of this project. It was previously thought two hangars. They skipped building one for the first device. Instead, they made it universal to fit any existing hangar. They will have to build one for this device and it is essential. And it's really cool that we will have to build our own hangar. First of all, we will have assets in the form of land and a building but the building will be super high-tech because a hangar is not just a garage for airships. A hangar is essentially an assembly shop and a maintenance shop. That is, airships will be assembled in it, exit from it, 
and then be operated peacefully on the street. But, like any machine, it requires maintenance. In order to bring the maintenance, one needs to return to the hangar, bring the maintenance and exit. So, in general, Ailing is an assembly shop and we definitely need to set up our own assembly shop and all of this will be carried out within the framework of this project. Serial production. In addition to design and construction, there are several very important and extremely critical technological processes, such as those that will remain with the company. We already understand what these technological processes will be, how we will master them because the airship is a very complex device with an infinite number of parts, definitely more than in a car, and it makes no sense to produce everything independently. There will be broad cooperation among manufacturers and the development of certain components and assemblies can be entrusted to others. However, to ensure that no one can bypass the contractors and subcontractors to build an airship, naturally, some critical technologies will be mastered within our project and everything will be implemented, partly in LNG and partly we can rent small workshops nearby. In time, it may even be possible to build, but that is not essential. The main thing is to master the technological process. In reality, some things can be discussed, while others cannot. For example, the absolutely coolest thing, definitely of course, is to learn how to produce fabric. Because whoever undoubtedly produces the fabric for the airship is doing a lion's share of the work, even if you just look at the volume. If we purchase fabric from someone, it will naturally make this enterprise wealthy, allowing us to master our own fabric. It is possible, and most likely we will do this. In fact, we will definitely do this. The question of which of these devices we will master and localize production for remains open. But those who produce fabric control the state for construction. And fortunately, we already have developments, technological processes, and experiments with fabrics created according to our technological processes. I am referring to the team that has been formed for this project. The project team has a solution, and that is very good. The fact that we have it is important because, in reality, fabric for airships is the most valuable. It must be durable. It must be inexpensive, of course, but when it's your own, it's inexpensive. When it belongs to someone else, they can quote you any price for it because you need to build an airship. It must be gas tight, UV resistant, and a whole bunch of other things, and other important characteristics. And in general, it's not difficult to do all of this. Also, as part of the project, I mentioned that a training center will be created. In our country, we already have several partners who have established their own dedicated training centers. These centers are designed to provide specialized training. You can go and train to become a private pilot, either for an airplane or a helicopter. You can also train to become a commercial pilot, flying on Boeings and so on. There have been schools in the past uh, that had licenses for ballooning, and these licenses have been revoked recently. Recently, the first school in Russia that received a license to train on airplanes, helicopters, and also for airship pilots. They started receiving it just before we launched the project and we were already familiar with them. We informed them about it, and most likely they received it specifically for us because they said they want to train airship pilots in the country. We are very grateful to them for this, for their existence, for having the necessary competencies, and most importantly, for their initiative in this direction. So we also have a training center facility as part of the project, clearly and obviously for the operating company because How is it possible to sell someone an airship without having operated it? Without gaining experience there and without transferring that experience into some manuals for the training center? It is clear why an operating company is needed. This is not only to make money from it, but also to gain initial experience and develop some skills. Well, naturally, there will be this commercial department that will sell all of this because it will be produced in series like those first airships 
which will most likely be produced exclusively as unmanned drones. They have a lot of work to do. This work intersects with existing flying vehicles, with airplanes, with light aircraft, with helicopters, with some. But in our country and in the world as a whole, there is in fact a relatively small crisis in the aviation industry and some aircraft will soon simply stop flying because they have reached the end of their resource in the near future. And very soon in the near future, this device will come to replace it and will be produced in series. Naturally, it will be commercially operated both within the operating company and can also be sold to interested parties, including logistics companies. And the large apparatus will also be operated and sold along with the hangars and associated facilities. What exactly this apparatus will be is somewhat understood. Or rather, it is precisely that point from which we will move left or right. But it is approximately a payload capacity of approximately 10 tons. This device will be small within the framework of the airship, but in the context of air logistics, it is already a serious player. There is the most widely known and produced helicopter on the planet, the MI-8. The MI-8 can transport approximately 4 tons, and a market for its payloads has already been conditionally formed. Well, the logistics are set up for it. This particular device will have a cost price similar to that of a MI-8, and it may even be cheaper. Transport twice as much, three times farther, and four times cheaper, efficiently. And we assume that these types of airships will very likely be the most serially produced and they will indeed have excellent margins on their sales. And so, within the framework of this project, we need to master the serial production of these airships to build at least one, preferably two, hangars where large airships will be produced serially. And for everything, thank you very much, Pavel Igorovich. How much money and time do we need exactly? Approximately, here is the device. Yes, can you tell me the timeline for when, given sufficient funding, it will be possible to launch the first airship and subsequent ones? We will undoubtedly successfully lift the first airship into the air in approximately less than a year, very soon. It seems that we will probably start serial production of it in approximately two years because... Producing and getting the airship into the air is beneficial, but obtaining the certification and license for serial production still takes time. Yes. Currently, we are in the initial stages of planning and development for the airship project, which involves detailed research and collaboration with experts in the field. This process is crucial to ensure the success and safety of the airship when it is finally launched. After this initial phase, we will probably lift the large airship in about three to three and a half years, and we can expect some serious production in four years on average. The timeline for the entire project, considering all necessary steps and potential challenges, is estimated to be around three and a half to four years. This is what we will definitely strive to accommodate into the timeline. By the way, friends, please write if the video is going well for you because I have the feeling that it sometimes glitches. Let me know if it's smooth, choppy, good or bad. It's going fine for me. Fine, right. Well, you watch on Vcontact, I watch on YouTube. Let us know where you are watching if our quality is good. And don't forget to like and repost. It's always appropriate. I have all of this on my computer just in case. Look, are those stratospheric devices part of this project? And what are they anyway? Look, within the framework of this project, everything is generally included. We are just saying a time frame of 3.5 to 4 years, but it can be stretched to 5. Of course, it is undesirable. The creation of this sustainable business model when it reaches self-sufficiency, becomes profitable and can further develop at its own expense, allows it to pay out dividends. Also, naturally it can expand like any business through attracting funds, but this will no longer be necessary for it. That is, the serial production and sale of two types of devices, 
having their own land, their own hangar, their own training center and their own operating company is the very business unit that has managed to stand on its own and move forward. And it is clear that while we are building the first device, the second device, we are already laying the groundwork for a lineup of subsequent devices, which could be 40 tons conditionally, and 100 and 200, including stratospheric devices, and they will all be developed in parallel. But how parallel will it be? If the development of the first device starts at this moment in time, then after some time, say approximately three months, the development of this device will also start in parallel. Probably about six months after the start, the development of the third device will kick off here, but it won't be given high priority resources or attention because we need to finish this one and complete that one. Naturally, work on the stratospheric devices has already started in parallel, and it's impossible to stop the flow of ideas while you're thinking about one thing, another idea comes to mind. The work on stratospheric devices has begun and is already underway, similar to the developments of those underground airships, where they spent 20 years working together on their projects and designing airships. So all projects related to stratospheric devices will be launched conditionally in parallel, but we are only gathering funding for that specific business unit the rest is also in general to a certain extent more or less on an initiative basis with very little expenditure against the backdrop of creating a serial production of this device, this Elling device. But these conditional developments, including some stratospheric launches in the near future, are all units of percent of the total budget, but everything is planned, yes, of course. Well, if we talk about the overall budget and move on, so to speak, to the financial figures in order to implement what Fedor mentioned, it will take three years or, as Fedor said, ideally not, but theoretically possible up to five years. We initially positioned it as a timeline of three to five years for the implementation of this plan. To implement this, we need a total sum of approximately $100 million dollars which we plan to raise within this time frame. Private investors who support the project will be given 49% of the created company, the office of which is in this very location where we are today with Fyodor conducting this broadcast. As you understand, crowdfunding in essence differs from crowd investing mainly and essentially in that the people who collectively support a certain direction are not making donations in their efforts. Here, everything is exactly like that. We have investing, meaning that what you do is essentially a financial investment and therefore you receive a share in the business being created as of today. You can safely and securely invest the amount of financial resources that you consider appropriate and acceptable for yourself using our investment platform. The current average investment amount stands at approximately 2,000 US dollars, which is a significant niche sum for many investors. In exchange for this investment, you will be granted investment shares. These shares represent rights to make claims against the company, Nova, providing you with a stake in its future success. And after the funding is completed in the near future, these shares that you are acquiring today will potentially give you the opportunity to ultimately exchange them for shares in the company Nova and become, as a result, a full co-owner of this company and a shareholder. Pasha says that Nova is the parent company that will include developers, serial production, operators and sales of the devices. Third party developments. There is an understanding of which major players we will likely start developing special devices for at what point upon their request. These will be large devices performing special tasks such as for say Rosatom or Roscosmos. Or there are understandings like those of Gazprom and they will come, so to speak, by purchasing development, production and construction of their own hangar as well as team preparation. Naturally the profit will be factored into the payment for all of this and even the profit from such large projects will still flow into the parent company with half of that profit or 49% being 
return to the investors. This is the very dividend on the shares that you can acquire. Not only will there be serial production of these two devices, but the production and sale of anything in the very near future will all flow here as a source of profit and development. Even the training center, conditionally speaking, will also be a commercial structure that will prepare airship pilots. It is clear that we will train our own airship pilots at our own expense. But outside individuals who want to learn how to operate the device, become technicians, mechanics, and so on, represent a commercial structure that will already generate some profit. And a third-party business, for example, an aviation company that has helicopters and airplanes now also includes airships, needs to train its new team in managing this device. Firstly, they need to provide training. And secondly, they need to undergo some retraining and so on. And this unit brings in money and therefore the parent company earns in general from the entire industry that we plan to build and establish commercial rails. All profits, such as various and different opportunities, will flow to the parent company. And now it is potentially possible to acquire a significant share of that very parent company through the internet, in the market today, through online platforms. Yes, and this is just the first step, right? This is the first step in the development of this company. Essentially, as Fedor said, we are attracting investments to create this profitable company that will not only sustain itself, but also start generating profit, share it with investors, and take a portion of the profit for ourselves. And what is the purpose of profit for developing companies? First and foremost, any rapidly growing company constantly reinvests that profit back into itself. There is already a clear understanding of where the company should be in five to 10 years, and the company will definitely follow this course of action without additional funding, unless of course there is some understanding that this could seriously accelerate the processes. Moreover, these investments will not be attracted to this parent company. That is, you now have the opportunity to enter the main company, which will then profit from all business directions, while developing a separate business direction, for example, the creation of another 20-ton airship or a stratospheric airship. A separate company will be established for that, and it can attract funding in its own way. You will not be involved in this, but you are part of the development of the company. You are a co-owner, so all of this is also very interesting for you. Yes, we considered the possibility that a major player, such as a corporation, comes in and potentially brings a significant amount of capital for the design, for example, of a large device. Naturally, there is some share of profit, and a portion of that profit goes to the parent company, which means to you. This is what Pavel was referring to. Regarding further development, all analysts agree that starting with a cargo capacity of 100 to 200 tons, it is desirable to build at least 100 devices. And the company that first accomplishes this will become the most profitable company on the planet as it will provide the very air Silk Road with the possibility of existence, that is, with certain devices. And our company is naturally and consistently endeavoring for that. And we have every chance to fully and absolutely occupy this niche because so far no one has even hinted that they are aiming for it. So we can ultimately and efficiently become the largest company on the planet in order to successfully achieve our goal. On one hand, this is true. On the other hand, we currently have the company's capitalization. As I understand it, we have not yet decided on which specific exchange we will be able to go public, capitalize and so on. But it is not necessary to have a squadron of a hundred cargo airships, enough to launch a couple of stratospheric devices for the value of your company to soar into the stratosphere. So we will push this market from all sides, both in terms of capitalization and profitability. Well, in general, whoever launches such a number of airships first on the planet will become the airship pilot and most likely that will be us. So, greetings to everyone. Yes, and how quickly this will happen depends on you, including those people who are specifically watching this webinar today. Well, 
when we talk about how wonderful it will be when we have dozens of our own airships and not just our own but also for sale and so on and so forth I always fondly remember this remarkable company Zeppelin from which I purchased a memorable souvenir when I had the unique experience of riding on an airship I recall this impressive company that astonishingly earns over a hundred million euros annually with only two airships in operation each of which makes an incredible 12 flights a day with passengers. Plus, they sometimes sell some airships, and they are doing very well indeed. So this business is indeed quite profitable, even if we set aside any grand dreams of global leadership. It is simply a very good profitable business, even with a relatively small number of devices. So, making money here is definitely more than possible, and the team is absolutely working on it without a doubt. Regarding the benefits for the investor, I have generally covered the main points. Today, you can invest in the project and receive a share of the company being created. The funding we have is for three to five years, during which the project will be financed, and it is of course divided into so-called funding stages. With each stage, Specific tasks are addressed, a certain amount of investment is attracted, and we move on to the next stage, or as it is now called in the investment world, an investment round. In total, we have 20 such stages or rounds planned, and right now we are not even at the first stage. We are at the zero stage, at the pre-launch stage, at the stage where we are shaping this project together with you. Fundamental things are being resolved before your eyes, while somewhere else things may change, but the vector remains exactly the one that was initially stated. Of course, we understand that at this stage people have many questions, and for some questions it is not always possible to provide a precise answer, and therefore, for an investor investing now, this is the maximum risk within this project. There will be no such investment risks at the fifth or tenth stage, and even more so, they will not exist in two to three years. Therefore, in order to thank those people who are indeed already supporting the project today, they are offered the best investment conditions, in particular the terms of this zero pre-launch stage, when you can acquire shares in the project at the lowest price. At this price, they will never be available for purchase again. Moreover, these packages cannot be increased and nothing can be done with them without buying more, even if you have some kind of Club 100 member conditions that offer privileged investment terms. Even in such a case, these pre-launch packages are only available now. So, if you like the project, if you dream of airships taking to the skies in Russia again, and in such a serial mass quantity, now you can lend a hand and support this cause and get the maximum return from this action. Airship enthusiasts can contribute your efforts to this noble cause in a significant way. Investment packages, financing conditions, all of this can be found in your personal account in the investment section. Study and read. If you have any questions, you can always ask them in support or write them here in the webinar. We will definitely tell you everything about it. Very soon, in the near future, we are anticipating a significant change in the investment stage and we will summarize the financing stage together in a comprehensive manner. But a little faster, we will be able to summarize our project with you in much greater detail over the past two months. And so, taking this opportunity, I would like to invite you to our webinar of the Solar Group, which will take place tomorrow, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. Moscow time. We will talk about the overall results of Solar Group, the Sovomash project, and the New Generation Airships project. Come if you want to stay informed and stay updated and learn about the detailed steps that have been implemented within our projects. Now, I think we can move on to the questions. Let's begin. We can start with questions from v Contactor. We will be looking at questions on the New Generation Airships channel and on the v Contactor broadcast questions, as well as in the official group. So you can write them right now if you haven't done so already, and we will start from the top down. Also, if you are watching us on the Solar Group channel, we will check that as well. But the main broadcasts are on V-Contact and the official YouTube channel. 
So, well, you know, let's go from top to bottom. Alexei is exactly asking if you will repeat the same thing every week just to maintain the hype. We need to launch short video reports like in Sobolmash. Instead of just repeating the same thing, Alexei, let's first figure this out. On Tuesday, we really go over the same things because we have a presentation for newcomers, for those who are not yet familiar with the project. So if you have any such people, bring them on Tuesday. If someone asks you about the project, what should you do? You can simply say, go to the webinar on Tuesday and the person will come. We will tell you everything. On Thursday, well, for now it's either Thursday or Friday, I think we will soon settle on a specific day for our regular news webinar. It's not the same there. We report on what has been done recently, answer your questions, so the information there is different. As for the need for short videos every week, you should understand that the office is only now starting to grow its staff, the team is being formed, the internet in the office is still unstable, and furniture is being delivered, so not everything can happen at once. I hope that we have already decided on the person who will be handling video content here on site and I hope that he will soon be with us on the team. So, as soon as that happens, the videos, as you mentioned, will start to be released regularly. Yes, our task is such that it will be somewhat like a series and once a week the operator will be living in the office, going with us to all the meetings and recording everything. Naturally, there will be some moments that should not be voiced or published and he will cut those out, but overall it will be a kind of live content. Once a week we will release an episode about what happened, so just wait a little, have some patience and everything will go smoothly. Igor writes, saying that we are risky guys for launching the broadcast after a survey in Telegram regarding a possible increase in the transfer fees for funds to the projects. How do you comment on this situation yourself? Igor, we are not afraid of any questions. So no matter what polls are conducted on Telegram, we will still be in touch with you live. To comment for those who may not know, there was a survey on how investors would react to a possible increase in the commission within the personal account. We have honestly told you about the situation that currently exists in the world. It is no secret to anyone. You know that money transactions are becoming more expensive worldwide and more and more money is being spent on fees for the contractors we use. This is completely normal. Everyone pays fees, even grocery stores, and we do it too. But we have higher fees. You know that we operate in different countries and different currencies. And this all affects the cost of monetary transactions. Therefore, we decided to bring the People's Project forward we decided to put this to a general vote. Take a look and share your opinion on whether you, as an investor, are willing to take on a small portion of the expenses so that more money reaches the project and can be spent on the project's needs. Because what is the situation here? Some people say, we don't care. You have a budget. You put your budget and your commissions in. But you must understand, money is spent in different ways. You can hold a great webinar, or you can just pay money for some transaction. If an investor is willing to take on a 1% commission, then they would pay either 100 rubles or 101 ruble. For an individual person, this is generally not very noticeable. This is very noticeable for us because of the large amounts of money involved. Therefore, we decided to raise this issue. It is currently under discussion, and if you wish, you can join this conversation. So, when is the drawing for Tolstoy? I understand this is a question for Andreev. I will clarify with him. As far as I know, it will be in two weeks, and exactly two weeks have passed. Thus, regarding the use of airships, a nuclear bunker for waiting out, God forbid, a nuclear apocalypse. Only sell the euro. To Amir for a higher price, yes. Don't code with the people. It's cheaper for the people. Yes, there is such an idea. It lingers in the minds of many. The thought that, God forbid, someday there will be that very nuclear winter, whether it will be Yellowstone or the Third World War. As if everyone is waiting for her and to endure her in the ground, it's not so. Well, being in a bunker deep underground is not as pleasant as rising above all this ash on new generation airships, 
creating gardens for oneself, breathing fresh air, looking at the sun, which is not there, it is complete darkness. Yes, the idea is in the air and circulating, not just among the people, but in general terms, well, among everyone. I won't say honestly that there has been a direct request for funding to build such a state, but the conversation is already happening in various circles. People with quite significant capital are contemplating this and discussing whether it is possible to create an arc like this. Right. Well, a certain yes personal arc. Everyone wants a personal arc, a personal bunker. And in general, it's possible there are no restrictions. Of course, there's the issue of fuel, but that's what solar panels are for. Water, of course, is to be extracted from the clouds above this new ash. There are certain tasks to tackle. Everything is indeed likely solvable, but I would not want that very nuclear winter. But yes, if it is not done by people, it could be arranged by the same Yellowstone. So one can prepare for everything. And yes, it's certainly much more pleasant, and yes, indeed, you can make money from it. Will we do it? We'll find out. I hope I won't have to deal with this. As they say, you can indeed make a lot of money from foreign panic sellers. Why not? How much can an initial state weighing 500 kilograms cost? How much can it cost? We have not yet fully calculated the serial cost of the project, including all the various salaries, rental of office and laboratory spaces, contractors, subcontractors, and other necessary personnel, and other associated expenses. We already have the detailed cost for this apparatus. And the total overall cost of the entire experimental project is always significantly several times more expensive than the serial one. The cost of creating just one single such apparatus is comparable to that of a high-quality, luxurious Rolls-Royce. Is it really the cost of a Rolls-Royce, one might wonder? Well, this is not a serial model at all. It is experimental. In other words, the serial version will be much more expensive and most likely its cost will pleasantly surprise all of us. And it will be a device that is as accessible as possible and I want to make it that way. Because yes, I have said this before and I can say it again, among airship enthusiasts, there has been some sort of unspoken rule since those ancient times. The volume of thousand cubic meters of the airship is equivalent to one million dollars. You want a dirigible with 2,000 cubic meters, $2 million? Want one with 10,000 cubic meters, that's $10 million? And this pricing structure is not related at all to the cost of its production. The production cost, taking into account localization, including elements like mastering the production of the same fabric, composites, transmissions, tail fins, control systems, and other related components, and so on, will be relatively low, similar to the cost of materials. This will make it affordable for large-scale production or mass production. Otherwise, the system will need to be broken to build something new, which are essential for the overall system. Alexander, who asked this question, mentioned a range of 10, 15 million dollars, but I believe Rolls-Royce is much cheaper in the context of the current market dynamics. Irina is asking, did you tell your airship crew what you meant? To train our airship pilots, um, I probably mentioned that we need pilots for the airships as we build them. There will be several versions of these. Optionally piloted airships, and someone needs to pilot them. Currently, there are a number of pilots who have the certification to operate an airship, but these pilots can be counted on one hand. Naturally, we need to take care of them and prepare replacements because everyone is aging and our fleet will only continue to grow. Naturally, we need our own airship operators to firstly test experimental models and secondly work with the same operating company. First, we need to test the factory samples, then the experimental ones. 
during licensing and later during its commercial operation, someone has to handle all of this and naturally there will be our airship operators. How can airships participate in military operations? Well, in an ideal scenario, we should not participate in military actions at all because our project is international. However, as a form of protection, the airship could, for instance, lift a couple of small airships that are capable of raising a few radars above cities to simply monitor and ensure the same civil security. We know that everyone can see that unmanned drones, such as conditionally quadcopters, are currently developing very rapidly on the planet, which are equipped with various munitions, explosives, and so on. This does not necessarily involve military actions. Terrorist actions can involve bandits. Anyone can use such technologies to monitor what is flying where. God forbid they could use airships for that. It seems to me that the applications are virtually limitless. The military will immediately come up with ways to use them. The only thing is that I wouldn't want to get involved with this. However, it can serve as a carrier for drones because drones currently have limitations on flight range, altitude, and a bunch of other restrictions. The airship can be filled with an endless number of these drones, carrying them very high, designed to reach an altitude of five kilometers, or even six, it doesn't matter whether it's 10 or stratospheric. And from it, these drones can disperse. The imagination is not limited in any way. I'm unsure if we can discuss this, but do you remember they told us about the airships that were supposed to be assisted by the air defense system? Some kind of catcher? With a net. Well, that's already a rather outdated application. Yes, even to the extent that on such drones over objects, for example, at oil and gas enterprises, they stretch nets to catch these kamikaze drones that fly with explosives. So, who can be contacted regarding the specific conditions for receiving partner bonuses with the existing structure? Igor, you can contact me, for example. You can write to me on Telegram. I am in the chat about new generation airships. Alternatively, you can reach out to technical support. They can provide you with my number or my Telegram. You can contact me. Alternatively, you can request the contact information of Sergei Shevchenko the head of the partner program there as well. You can also negotiate with him. We are all available at your choice. So what is the difference between airships, helicopters and airplanes? Ah, airships, helicopters and airplanes. Speed, distance, payload, capacity. Well, the airship can essentially match helicopters in terms of speed, can significantly cover distances that are much greater than helicopters However, it is slower than airplanes. In terms of cost and payload capacity, airships will be able to carry much more than helicopters. We have the largest uh, cargo planes on the planet, and it's unlikely we will build anything with a greater payload capacity. However, all engineering is likely heading in that direction. We can build airships, and they will be much larger. But the most important thing is that they do it cheaper, meaning it is more cost-effective to transport using airships than by planes, and even more so than by helicopters. The helicopter is the most expensive option, while the plane is cheaper, but it seems more economically efficient to transport it by airship, however it feels like it would be slower. But the airship does have that particular advantage. It can pick up cargo from the manufacturing plant and deliver it directly either to a warehouse or to the consumer anywhere. And if it's slower, it seems that to transport cargo by plane, you first load it onto a truck, then transfer it from the truck to a train, and from the train, conditionally, to the same plane. And with all these cargo transfers, the airship will most likely deliver everything. Yes, there will be a section of the road where the plane will fly very quickly. But if it is door-to-door -door as a dirigible can do, it is likely to surpass the airplane.
because it does not require airfield basing, it can take off from any platform, even from the roof of a building. And we will naturally work on all the technologies, such as starting with this drone. It is small. So if we compare the airship to an airplane and a helicopter, firstly, it can transport cargo from point A to point B without any necessary infrastructure. And it can do so much cheaper than a helicopter or an airplane. For example, a helicopter might not even be able to reach point B. But it won't have enough range. The airship will be sufficient. The airplane, even if it flies there faster, won't be able to land while the airship will. And plus, it will make everything more economically efficient, meaning cheaper, and what is most interesting, safer. The airship has been recognized just recently, a highly respected and esteemed technical council was convened in our Ministry of Defense. And there is this solution that among all types of air transport, the airship is absolutely the most secure and reliable. Well, listen, they said that, so... But this is logical. If a helicopter's engine fails, the helicopter falls straight down. If an airplane's engine fails, and as long as it has enough speed, it can glide along some trajectory, questioning if it can land safely, or if it will end up in a forest or water, which could be disastrous. If the airship fails completely, it will simply remain suspended in the air, but of course what it... Most likely they will all be a bit overweight, so yes, there will be a crash, and at about the speed I am showing. Panic on board, we are falling, but of course no one is actually falling. In general, it is safe and cheap. It was compared based on a certain size. The larger it is, the cheaper it becomes. One ton per one kilometer. From a certain size, we will accurately calculate from which, well, conditionally, the same 100, 200 tons. It will already be economically equivalent to sea transport. Maritime transport is the cheapest mode of transport on the planet for cargo transportation. In other words, it is measured by tons. Conditionally, trains, trucks, airplanes, helicopters. But the helicopter is the most expensive overall, while the airship will be the cheapest. So that's how it is. If you compare it, it's about economy, safety and range. And so, from point A to point B, very important. Though the plane or helicopter flies faster, by the time you load it onto, transport it to the plane, etc., the airship will have already slowly but surely delivered everything a long time ago. And while you were answering, you just touched on the next question. Are drones not dangerous to the airship itself? I mentioned that even if there is some kind of breach, holes and so on, indeed, in fact, drones as a whole pose a danger. They pose a danger to everything. For a factory, for a building, for a car, or even for an airplane, perhaps for a helicopter or potentially for a dirigible such as these. I believe that in the next decade, this will be a serious challenge for all security services from civilian to military, some kind of anti-drone systems. And naturally, they will all be installed on the new generation airships. Perhaps something developed will be unique in the context of creating this apparatus. We all have to defend ourselves, our loved ones, and protect our property, both movable and immovable, including airships and drones, which pose a danger to everything. So, what should we do to ensure safety and ensure the security of our assets? There was a financial question I missed today. How much funding is planned to be raised for the pre-launch? Sergey. At this moment, you remember that initially it was an amount of 2.5 million, then it was reduced to 1 million. I think we will know exactly what the specific amount will be after Wednesday, that is, after tomorrow. Why? Because Fedor has already mentioned that there will be a scientific and technical council tomorrow where the appearance and overall design of the first airship will be discussed. At that point, it will be clear step by step what resources will be needed and when for the projects, making it much easier to determine when and how much funding will be required. It is necessary, at least until this device is lifted into the sky, 
and I think we will officially announce this. So I missed a bit of the antidocs on the IT specialist. Was it about the pre-launch? How much money is needed for the pre-launch so that there is... I responded to clarify why we initially mentioned 2.5, then talked about a million, and now people are asking if it's really a million. I said that tomorrow will be an important milestone after which we can definitely move forward with a specific step-by-step -step plan. The zero stage is indeed the stage of maximum risks. The maximum risks were that we didn't have a company, there was no office, and people were not officially employed. We didn't fully understand what exactly we would be building in terms of new generation airships and nothing was agreed upon. Once we resolve all these tasks and eliminate these risks, we can conditionally change the zero stage to the first. Is this somehow tied to the sum of one, 2.5 or some millions of dollars? Unlikely. You can say, so to speak, that the zero stage is effectively closed. We gathered this much during the zero stage and summarize it. It can be done this way as well. It can be done that way, yes. The question here is how precise the understanding is after the Scientific and Technical Council. It will be sufficiently detailed, right? And well documented. Look, the Scientific and Technical Council focuses more on technical requirements, technical specifications, and technical appearance of the device. The economics will start to be calculated after we agree on all of this. Ah, uh, well, there will be some next step, right? So, by the time of the conference, everything will definitely be clear. Maybe at the conference we will perhaps either change the stage itself or announce the exact date. By the way, regarding the conference, I would like to remind you once again that on November 16th we have the Solar Group Conference where we will discuss the Duinov engine project and of course the new generation airships project. So if you are interested in these projects, be sure to attend. This will all take place in Moscow. There we will meet and discuss everything. Accordingly, it will be a significant milestone for us. There, we will have the main event of this conference. As part of the Duyunov engine project, we are moving to the final stage. And within the framework of the new generation airships, we are moving to the first stage. So everything is quite symbolic, one could say, and it is precisely there. Gradually, yes, gradually. And there we will firmly and clearly announce all of this. So at the conference, those who attend will be the first to know about it. And immediately regarding the second question, the amount of money actually collected to date from our payments is $728,000. This is the sum that people have used to purchase investment packages. Regarding the question of how you assess the pace of funding, well, you can't just say it's good or bad. Some might say it's little, like 10,000 investors in the first week, while others might say it's a lot we need to base our assessment on what we had before. I specifically checked the statistics before answering regarding what we had in the previous project. In the first two months of funding, we had 200 investors, meaning our project started in early June, and we had 200 investors in June and July. And now, in fact, two months have passed since the first conference and announcement, and we have 1850 investors or let's say 2,000 investors. In other words, we are currently progressing in this project at a pace that is 10 times faster than how we started the Duino engine project. That's the whole answer. In the Duino engine, we have installments totaling $15 million. New generation airships has $5 million. That is, the project has only existed for two months and people have already raised $5 million in installments. Yes, this money will not be paid out today, or even in a year, but still, I am confident that if we behave consistently now, regularly informing you about what is happening here, even more people will understand just how great the project we have launched is. I am sure that by the new year, we will have $10 million in installments. And approximately the funding for both projects, they can actually match the pace of funding that exists. Therefore, everything is more than successful for us, and the numbers, so to speak, reflect this, especially in comparison to the project that we have been working on together for more than one year. Yes, the response to this project regarding the airships is just incredible, incredibly positive, kind, everyone likes it, they call, and it's just people who are interested, asking, so are you really building airships? Well, indeed, certainly yes, specialists from both 
relevant and non-relevant institutions. Everyone is interested, everyone wants to participate, they offer help, they suggest some services, asking how they can assist, and we have this, that, the fifth, the tenth, we are engaged in this or that. I have land there, I have this, I have everything, and from all sides this matter is falling apart. There are many initiators. Everyone is incredibly fond of the topic. Indeed it is, natural, huge airships, the future. Yes, and we have a conference on November 16th. Tell me, Fyodor, will we show something, maybe even our own products? Can we expect that, if anyone comes? Our own products, but, but our designers have a lot of developments. We can bring something, a small airship, for example, an eight meter one. It won't be able to fly though, because no, it depends on where. If we take it outside, we can fly it there. If we bring it indoors, we probably won't. Well, we won't be flying it there. Because it needs to be deflated, then inflated, it's helium. Although it can also be inflated with helium. In general, we will contribute something. It will happen. The question is where and how. But you will certainly see the new generation airships there. They are small, and it's hard to even call them a toy, but they are not serious either. However, they can easily lift about 10 kilograms. And here are the airships that can be demonstrated. Up to 40. In general, this year we will demonstrate some test samples, so to speak, or simplified versions that weigh up to approximately 10 kilograms, but the goal for the standard plan is to present them in total next year. In a year we will have a fully autonomous serious device that can be used in commerce, produced on a large scale, and we have tasks for it that we will gladly solve for a fee. So, well, let's move on to the questions uh, that are on the YouTube channel of New Generation Airships. All right. They are asking who is from Duyunov. Well, of course, there are many investors here from our first project. This is not surprising. Will Duyunov's Slavyanka be installed on these New Generation Airships, at least? At the very least. Most likely it will be. We introduced the airship pilots to Nevera Alexandrovich and took them to Sovolmash. They talked and realized that there are points of contact. The airship designers liked the characteristics of the engines. Duinov requested clear technical specifications. The technical specifications will be formed after the first NTS takes place and the specific capacities and other configurations are determined in general. A technical specification will be formed and sent to Sovelmash. If Sovelmash responds positively and constructively, then there will be engines. Well, Alexander writes that before one project was finished, they started another, and that the funds are not unlimited, the dollar exchange rate is rising, and so on. Look, Alexander, first of all, you were correctly informed that in the Sovelmash project, the existing installments are quite sufficient to further finance the project. Yes, new investors are also needed there now. However, there are no risks that the project will be underfunded because, once again, there are already enough installments to bring the enterprise fully to its final stage. Moreover, a commission is already working and by the end of this year, the enterprise is expected to start its commercial activities. Essentially, the investors and the funds that will be coming in at the final stage are primarily needed for the additional purchase of some equipment and to keep Sovolmash afloat until the first profit is received. That is, we need to understand that we only started the new project when we realized that the first project is not only safe, but that it will definitely take place. Moreover, if all technologies and innovations were launched one after another, we would have long been living in the Stone Age. Therefore, we have always said that we would take on a second project, but we will only do this when we feel that we are ready for it. When our partner community is ready for this, and when there is such a demand from investors. And now to walk past the airships, they talked for a whole hour and a half today about why it was impossible now. Under no circumstances should we wait any longer in any way as a significant and influential player will definitely emerge in the country. 
Fortunately, we have appeared because there is a demand from the government for the development programs of the airship industry, and there is likely a certain budget allocated for this, corresponding to these budgetary requests in the near future. The very engineering team that is capable of accomplishing this task in the only country could have been taken by someone. Do we need it? We don't need it. We need to build the airship ourselves and do it efficiently. So we didn't have any time to waste at all. Yes, there is a saying that a spoon is good for lunch. And we started this project then, but again, maybe we were lucky. Maybe it was the course of events. One always wants to say that it was planned this way, that on one side, Solar Group was ready to start a new project, and the project itself was, so to speak, ready to begin. It needed to be done now. And everything is clear with Sobolmash as well. Sergei Semyonov consulted with Dmitry Alexandrovich, and it all came together when Dmitry Alexandrovich said something like, Sergei, don't worry. Everything is already fine with Sobolmash. We have the ZOS, we have started production, and we already have a queue of customers. Commercialization is already here. So the project actually happened. Don't worry, launch the next one. And now they have launched the new generation airships. So those who say that one project is unsuccessful, as it was written there. Well, because we didn't finish it else. It's all over indeed. But now, approximately three months will pass, or some small, noticeable period. Duenov will report that the first profit has been received from some development. We will say, oh, it's time to start building airships. But all the airship builders have already been taken. Well, in general, this is not how it should be done. And these three months, which, well, three months, I don't know where I got that from. I mean, what do we do when Duyanov says everything is great, we are all commercially successful, while we have already missed several projects? We are like, well, at least we waited, right? Well, yes, from the perspective of Solar Group, it should be understood that neither the community, nor the partners, nor the employees could live for months without a salary, because, so to speak, the activities of Solar Group involve financing one way or another. So, let's look at the questions more further. How many shares are there at the moment? How many shares? There are 50 billion shares at the moment. So, you say it yourself, however, whether there will be an increase, no increase, or an extension of the stage, various shares, you will have everything. So indeed, I didn't understand the question. Well, I suppose the question is about how many shares there will be, and then whether there will be stocks, increases, and so on. Well, it seems like there's a question here, but as I understand it, it's more of a provocation. You keep saying that you won't extend the deadlines, that you won't do this or that, yet you still end up doing it. Sometimes you did it, sometimes you didn't, and now it's uncertain whether you will do it or not. Well, you see, we have never done any promotions just for the sake of it. I mean, if you remember, for example, last year we had a promotion where you could increase your package and also take it under the same conditions. Why were we doing this, right? Because there was a clear request for money from Sovolmash, which, by the way, was fulfilled. You should remember that. There, in two months we were to transfer, I don't remember, it was three million dollars. And we did that, right? Accordingly, we managed to complete a number of tasks before winter arrived. I am confident that if we hadn't done this back then, there wouldn't be any inspections of this ZOS now, because we would still be in the process of finishing it. Then we managed to gain about six months there. Yes, because if we hadn't completed this work before winter, we would have only done it after winter. Here is the question. Why was this action needed, just like all the other actions? They are done to accelerate the project. If something similar is needed here, let's say, if something needs to be bought urgently, some element for the new generation airships, we will wait in line at the factory, and they will only arrive in three months. Maybe we will hold a promo, but this is always a forced measure. So, a question. It is clear that it won't be possible to enter all areas at once, but what has been considered, I understand. What areas is this about? But I understand that it won't be possible to enter all areas at once. How many are considered and will be realized? Probably in the field of application, 
new generation airships. Or maybe the regions. Maybe regions or areas. In terms of application, this refers to unmanned cargo transportation, which is the first point. The second point relates to this device. The main focus is on unmanned cargo transportation. As for this vehicle, the first ones will likely be tourist oriented. This is because there is a strong demand for several tourist vehicles. This is very solid demand. That's indeed one, and actually two. It's certainly like good demonstrators for further development because it is possible to build a large vehicle for transportation, for example, a rocket carrier to the manufacturing plant at the spaceport, but they will say, build it at your own expense. We will look further into whether it is safe or not, whether we will use it or not, to build and certify a tourist ship to take a ride on it. To show the same people from space and say, look, it works, is a completely different conversation. So these first ones will most likely be tourist flights, and even then as demonstrators. The future will involve cargo transportation. As for the industry of large vehicles, they are needed for space, for the oil and gas sector, and for many other industries but it's still too early to talk about that. So if we talk about the direction, it will be an unmanned vehicle, just a cargo drone, and these first ones will most likely be tourist flights. We'll see what happens next. And what about the markets? Which markets are planned for entry? Which countries' markets? That's a good question but we are indeed most particularly interested in entering the Asian markets, naturally, because the current geopolitical situation strongly suggests that this is certainly our only option. However, the project is international in nature and we can develop in all directions. We will see. Focus in your own country and focus on the Asian direction as well as the European direction. Oh, Africa, my God. Africa is probably the largest and biggest market and from which we will likely start. So we will likely begin within our own country. This project is all experimental demonstrational and then we will move on to explore the African continent. All of this is also related to licensing and certification. Then we will move to Asia, and the third priority will be Europe and beyond. To summarize, in brief summary, the market movement strategy is in essence as follows. A net can be stretched around perimeter of city by a group of new generation airships. Probably not necessary. This is about the question on drones. Brought in balloons, for example, will be there, but there will be a significant number of them. Is it necessary or not? That's a question, not airships. It's better to start with brought-in balloons such as these. Is it possible to disperse clouds or to capture clouds and provide water in droughts? It's easier to scoop from the lake than to absorb a cloud. He is with us, a research associate. Artem, tell me, is it possible to absorb a cloud? Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, it is possible, they say. So, perhaps, can we potentially sell water from the cloud, possibly? Well, condensing a cloud is certainly possible. The question is one of feasibility. It indicates where there is no water, no clouds. So, if it is necessary to irrigate some agricultural land in a sage, a dry area, the water will most likely have to be taken from a reservoir. So, finally, someone has taken on what I have been insisting on for two years, that we need to develop and utilize the good old airships and balloons, including for the protection of strategic facilities from drones and terrorists. Yes, no problem, just a comment. But it's very true. New generation airships are of interest to everyone for protection against drones, judging by the comments. The stratosphere is unreachable for drones, it can hover over the launch point and extract water from the atmosphere. 
dropping tons on the heads of those controlling the drones or directing artillery. The stratospheric vehicle, yes, it's a very interesting device, multifunctional. By the time they build it, it will already be outdated. What is this about, I wonder? About the airships? About airships, they haven't heard. It's already been a year. What's interesting over there? Will flying saucers take off in a year? Let's write in the comments what will be relevant in a year. It's very interesting and fascinating indeed that you mentioned that one of the rapid and significant changes is that the airship, which is a remarkable piece of technology, will be fully and completely computerized. Computerized, yes. Yes, a big computer. In this regard, yes, things will change quickly, but we have specialists, and they are very good. Yes, we have the most modern and top-notch IT specialists who work with artificial intelligence, machine learning, and autopilot systems based on completely different principles. They are all doing this. And like any other technology, take a car from 10 years ago and a modern car. It is indeed now really more of a computer than a car and it will be the same with the airship even, with this first one. So everything there will be relevant or not relevant. It will certainly be classic. Who will guard the guard? And how will we protect the new generation airships, apparently? Here is the question. We need to consider it comprehensively. Which specific airship are we going to protect? If this is a guard, then surely there are guards for the guards nearby. And if this is some kind of unique tourist vehicle moving from point A to point B, then first of all, there should be some kind of guardians along the route and overall confidence in the route. It is clear that flying where it is not allowed is not permissible. Well, the pair itself must indeed have a security system and it should definitely be available. We need to take into account the question of who will guard the guards in a comprehensive manner. So, here is just another comment that has been discussed a lot. As a matter of fact, the airship is well suited for the Arctic, Siberia and the Far East, with very great prospects to boost the economy. They also suggest transporting fresh fish from Sakhalin there. Yes, there are many ideas for applications, and as I mentioned before, the most important thing for our company is to demonstrate, first of all, our organizational capabilities, that we have organized ourselves and built these devices. Secondly, indeed, to demonstrate that these are modern devices capable of performing specific tasks with a clear economic rationale. And as soon as we demonstrate all of this, so to speak, we will provide the specialist with a specialist tool. In this case, it is business. And the business will have a clear and understandable tool with clear economics and characteristics. By solving its tasks, the business will realize that having solved this and that, it can now apply this. We measured it effectively. While this new chisel is not available, no one even thinks of applying it. Our task is to gift the world a new chisel, one that is sufficiently effective with various applications, whether it be fish with Sakhalin or servers hanging high where there is no need to pay for their cooling because everything is cooled by the external environment. There will be a multitude of applications. Our task is somewhat different. To demonstrate our organizational and technical capabilities in solving these tasks. Well, it seems we have run out of questions, so I think we can wrap up the broadcast for today. Before we finish, let me remind you once again, friends, that tomorrow at 7 p.m. Moscow time, we have a major reporting webinar for Solar Group. There, we will discuss the overall figures, results, and achievements. At that webinar, it will be me with Fedor, Sergei Shevchenko, and Sergei Semenov, the CEO of Solar Group, so be sure to attend. I'm sure there will be a lot of interesting information for you. We will talk about airships and combined windings. In general, we will answer your questions. We are waiting for everyone. And on Thursday, there will be a news webinar on the new generation airships project. Don't miss out, invite your friends, and remember to be as active as possible. 
By the way, make sure to follow us on our social media where you are currently watching us so you don't miss future broadcasts. In general, to support the project, a subscription, like, and repost are needed. Bloggers say this automatically. In our case, it is necessary. The project is crowdfunding, and the funding is from the people to lift large devices into the air. We will gather air for this. But if we really want to lift air with a hundred serial large devices, everyone will have to put in effort. So let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. There are also two more questions. I took a quick look. First, they say it smells a bit like MM. Visit the Technopolis in Moscow, Zelenograd, Alabushevo, and take a look at the pyramid we built, which has thousands of square meters of production space according to the latest trends. Sciences and technologies are created using this method, funded by this company, and then return it and comment on whether it resembles MMM or not. And secondly, they are asking when there will be quality photos and video materials for partners to promote the project. Well, colleagues, please clarify what exactly you need. There are already two presentations available specifically. That is, not the ones we show at the webinars, but for partners to get personally acquainted and to forward to their partners, they are available in the personal account. That is, if any additional documents are needed, we have chats for partners. You can easily and comfortably write in the investors chat. We read all these chats and will enthusiastically listen to you and create the materials you need. We will have this NTS. After the NTS, we will need just a little more time to create the design technical appearance. At first, the technical appearance will naturally be technical, just engines here, power like this there, and so on and so forth. We need a little time to create the industrial design, and based on the real appearance that will be built and take to the air within a year, we will prepare materials for the presentation, most likely by the first conference. So, if you need such juicy presentations with figures, visuals, and roadmaps, just wait a little longer. Everything will be ready. I didn't want to create these materials without having a solid foundation. That's how everyone does it. And it's not very nice. We'll do it properly. We just need to wait a little. Well, that's it. Good luck to everyone involved. Thank you to the team and everyone who contributed. Thank you very much to you as well for watching, for being active, and for participating in the project. I am sure that we will see the first airships very soon. And not just airships, but also stratospheric vehicles. But the first at the conference Fedor has already mentioned, so we are all waiting. I hope we can show something. All right, let's wrap it up then. Thank you all very much. Goodbye, everyone. Yes, if there are any pressing questions that I can answer, please write them in the Telegram group. We are always available there. That's all. Goodbye, everyone.